We're so excited to chat with our next guest. He's an actor on Snowfall, a host, a hilarious comedian. He's always making us laugh. He's just a pure nut, but he's our friend and we love him. Please <laughs> welcome D. Ray Davis. <laughs> hey, D. Ray. Hey, D. Ray. D. Ray. D. Ray. Yes. I heard that you rarely use your celebrity status to get to your advantage, but you recently did. What did you do, D. Ray? Uh, well, it, it, okay, it wasn't using my status. It's just that they couldn't see I was D-Ray under the mask at the DMV, so I thought I'd show them. <laughs> and how did that work out for you? It, it went really good, man. The line was around the corner, and I felt bad for all those people waiting who don't do comedy, who don't act at that moment. <laughs> and normally, I, I love all the essential workers. I love what everyone does, everyone who's been working. But at that moment, being a comedian and an actor slash model, as you can see, <laughs> oh, my Lord. Speaking of your great looks and the multiple yous that are behind you, um, yes. you've actually been on our show and you've been super open about your polyamorous relationship. So, D-Ray, the million-dollar question is, the thing everyone wants to know, are you still with your two girlfriends? Well, the rest of my life. <laughs> really? Wow. I don't ever not having... Two girlfriends. I don't. I just don't see that happening. So, and the word you use, that poly word, I can't even spell that word. We just call it big love over here. Wait, wait. So, D Ray, wait. The same yeah. women that we had as pictures up on the yeah, last time you were visiting us at the Real. Same women. Yeah, there's not an interchanging <laughs> system that goes on. Wow. I know, but I just want to make sure. How long? How many years has it been? Uh, five. But wow. wow. Yo. Well, Although Coco's been around for, Coco's been putting up with me for yes. about almost nine years. I want to talk okay. to them next time you come on. I, I don't, that, that never works out well in the conversation, because I end up getting dogged out. <laughs> oh, no, we got you back. Don't think like that. We got you. Jenny, do I have to say everything twice for you now, though? Why? Because Gigi always repeats <laughs> his lyrics. He always repeats, he always says it twice. He's like, now I'm on the real, and I'm on the real. He always says it twice. I just <laughs> wake up in the morning, see the roof gone. I ain't yeah. got no roof on. It's usually. Just in case you were in the back. If you were in the back, he was saying it to you. He wanted to make sure you got the message. You know, it's funny. I know we're not supposed to talk oh, yeah. about uh, you on here at all, but Jeezy uh, told me once that I'd be a much bigger comedian if I had more lights when I came on stage. He said, I saw your special, you know, it, it was good, but you need more production. You need more lights. <laughs> and I was like, well, give me some light money then, Jeezy. Oh, oh my uh, God. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what we was looking out, out for you. There, okay? Just one real quick. There speaking of, speaking of uh, comedy and being on stage, we all now live in an age of, you know, cancel culture exists. As a comedian, do you ever worry about what you say in, in your stand-up routine? Uh, I don't think as a comedian, but as a dad and as someone who mm. grew into a role model, because even if you don't want to be a role model, people people often say, I'm not a role model, don't look at me like that. You put yourself in that position of power to be a role model. So I look at the Eddie Murphy way, like Eddie didn't decide to do family movies off jump. It just, mm. he got older and it happened that way. So the things he used mm. to say, he didn't feel that way exactly anymore. So I think we all have to be care careful, but... As far as being canceled, no, nah, nah, I mean, they could cancel my cards and all that. I'm not going to ever be canceled. We've, we've been here. We planted seeds in this. So if they cancel That's me, they got to right. cancel everybody. I mean, if your piece of delivery That's man, right. like, I hate that. Let's cancel them. Like, nah, we can't. Just because someone steps outside of the yeah. boundaries you presented for yourself in your mind. I agree. Doesn't mean we have to so cancel great. them. You've actually performed a few times on stage since the pandemic hit. What was that like for you? Uh... <laughs> It, it was cool. It wasn't exactly comfortable. I, I used to think that I'm so funny that no matter what, when I go up, I'm going to be funny. And I had my moments during that set, even though I can hide it and the audience probably couldn't feel it. <laughs> I, I just really, I forgot all the things, my routine, my, uh, my cologne four or five times I do. Mm -hmm. I do like a, I wipe my hand with a cold towel. I, I, I didn't have none of that stuff down. So when I went on stage, oh. I felt like a new comic in, in, in someone else's body. So... Let me tell oh, y'all wow. about D-Ray, though. D-Ray does, like, 14 shows in a week. So 
just wow. imagine that. That's like what? That's like 40 shows in a month. So yeah. did you ever feel rusty that you went from zero, you know, for like 40 a month to zero? Did, were you rusty? Yeah, I felt like I was. I felt like I had, and plus I hadn't been out. So there was no things happening besides Corona to talk about, which is not, I mean, although we speak on things because we want to find the funny right. in it for comfort within ourselves, but it's not a funny subject realistically. So yeah, right. I didn't have that That's being true. outside, being at the club, running into you, Lonnie, being out to talking my stuff. You know, I didn't have that, <laughs> that luxury to take that to the stage. It's like I came off my couch. And they're like, who is this uncle up here <laughs> telling these? I felt like, oh, no. like, I don't know, man. It was, it was definitely thrown off, though. I have to ask you, with the new norm, do you think comedy clubs will ever come back? Or do you think it's only going to be like virtual clubs? It depends if you vote or not. That uh, part. Okay. Y'all vote, okay. vote in the right direction and comics will be back full. I'm sure everyone will be healthy and back to what we're supposed to be. You got some cities that really don't care, though, like uh, Florida, Dallas, uh, yeah. uh, Texas. They like, hey, we're open, get you some food and some laughs. But um, I'm glad that we'll be going into it with cleaner hands. I'm mad that we had to teach America to wash their hands. Like, I want that to stay mm. a rule. That should that be a rule hard. anyway. And right. if you're dirty and you're filthy, take a bath anyway. Uh, Great okay. answer. No. Now, d no. I actually heard that Ricky Smiley cursed you out once at a club. What happened? Really? Well, I'm, I'm known for uh, I love Ricky always Smiley. stepping outside of, when I, when I was younger, I would step outside of myself. Uh, and I, I speak highly of myself comedically. So Ricky has always checked me. And um, since the moment he met me, even when I tried to, uh, I hate saying this, but I tried to sneak some, uh, I was in the club, so I thought, I could sneak some alcohol. I wasn't I wasn't old enough yet, but I thought I could have a little oh. taste at Ricky's club because he was a comic and that wasn't going okay. down. Um, I think the biggest curse out I get is about what I do with my money because Ricky got boats on top of boats in his island on top of fish. And he's like, what you doing with your money? You just blowing it on what the, the women and the ladies? You'll never have a house like this. I'm like, Ricky, I ain't gonna never have a house like this anymore. But um, <laughs> he's, he's just no. really, he's a really good Ricky's big brother, man. The so truth. to have somebody like that to listen to yeah. and considering that I always think I'm the boss and to have somebody bossing me in this field that I think I'm great in is, is good, man. Ricky crazy. We love you on the stage, D-Ray, but we also love you on the show, Snowfall. Uh, what's going on with season four? I'm really, ooh, he ugly. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, Stop. man. <laughs> It's it's exciting. Uh, I was upset because we stopped uh, around episode three, and right when we did episode two, I had this huge shootout scene, and I'm like, oh, this is life changing. It felt like I got the vibe I did, like 21 Jump Street. Like I'm, I'm, I felt real bad on that one, real like mm. crazy. And um, when we stopped it, I was just hoping that when we go back, which is we're back, you know, that I oh, would not be fat when we go back. That was my only worry. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. It's going to, the continuity going to be off. They're going to have to shoot me from right here. Right here, the neck to the, <laughs> the eyebrows. You got the quarantine 15. <laughs> I, got, I got a 12 pack You can right use now. one of those guys behind you as a stand-in. If, if they told me they were right. shooting, if we got to take our Smart. shirts off to shoot, I quit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am a tank top lover. You understand me? I keep that tank top. Got you. Oh. <laughs> Visual noted. Got it. Thank you. D-Ray, thank you so much for hanging out I with us today. Y'all, look out for the upcoming season of Snowfall on FX. And D-Ray also has some upcoming tour dates. So head on over to thereal.com to see if he's coming to a city near you. Watch out now.